Stop. Hey, what's up everyone? My name is Murray. Welcome to this video. Today we're going to take a look at six video editors designed for beginners all the way up to the professionals. So basic editing, cutting, things like that, all the way to the visual effects, tracking, motion graphics, stuff like that. Keep in mind that some of these softwares may not work for you because you may have a different workflow, different needs, and a different skill level. So these will work differently. I know that I started out with like Vegas Pro 11 or something like that way back and then I moved to the Adobe Suite because I kind of gotten used to it and also started to get better at what I was doing. Also consider subscribing because I am lonely. Huh, just got a new subscriber. <laughs> And I need to reach a thousand subscribers right now. <laughs> but uh, yeah, let's jump in. But first, intro. So the first thing on the list is Premiere Pro. It's really popular. The Adobe Suite is pretty industry standard right now. Uh, I use it. It's really good because I have a really great workflow with it. You might not use it. That's totally fine. Don't feel biased to a specific software. Use what works for you because there's specific needs for everyone. So I use Premiere Pro because it's really great. It can link in After Effects, visual effects stuff and things like that. Also, it's just really straightforward. My only catch with it is that it is like $20 a month or something like that, like by itself. If you get the suite, it's like 53 with Premiere Pro, After Effects, Audition, Lightroom, Photoshop, all that kind of stuff, the whole nine yards. So I have that. But if you just want Premiere Pro, it's $20 a month. That's the only catch that I have with it is that it's a monthly occurring fee. Uh, but I mean, it, I, I get around it. I, it's what I have to do, so I really don't have a choice with it. And the next thing we have on the list is Avid Media Composer Ultimate. It's like $50 a month, which is a little bit on the pricey side, but I mean, Avid is a pretty big contender with editing software and things like that. It's pretty well known. I haven't used it before, but I have heard that people are really happy with it. Um, for me personally, $50 a month is a little steep for just an editing software but it may work better for you in your situation. So just take that with a grain of salt. And then an obvious one on the list is Final Cut Pro 10. Uh, there was a previous version of it and people really, really enjoyed it. Apparently it was really good. And then when Final Cut made an update into Final Cut Pro 10, people seemed to be really frustrated. There, sh there was probably a huge uproar about it. I have, ah. good gracious. I haven't used it. Uh, but people that have had the recent update that has fixed the Final Cut Pro 10, a lot of people have been switching back to that because of the update, because apparently it's been fixed. If I were to switch my editing software, it would be to Final Cut because of that one, one yeah, because of that one source fee. And it's a pretty industry standard as well. A lot of people use it, so definitely a great option for you. Next one we have on our list is HitFilm Express and HitFilm Pro. The Express version is for free, which is actually actually really awesome that there's actually some free editing software out there. That's not absolute garbage. This one is actually really, really nice. You can mess around with it and if you wanted to upgrade, you can upgrade to the Pro version because obviously that has extra features and things like that. Lots of tutorials out there about how you can edit it so you're not going to be in the dark as opposed to like if you use some other off-brand visual of, uh, editing software and stuff like that so really great support system out there really great software and it's also for free if that's something that you want the pro version is just over 200 bucks which is actually pretty decent at once off fee that's nice i like that business model i hate the reoccurring stuff it's very annoying but it's just one thing i gotta deal with adobe it also feels a lot like final cut pro 10 uh, i've never used final cut before but i've seen tutorials on both softwares quite in depth and they seem pretty similar. The feel seems kind of almost the same. Next thing we have on the list is the Vegas Movie Studio and Vegas Pro. I'm going to look at my notes here because there's so much about it. So the Vegas Movie Studio 15 starts at 50 bucks and then there's three different versions of it. The most expensive being 100 bucks. One sold fee which is nice. Obviously the more expensive you pay the more features you get. Um, in addition, you get to get the Vegas Pro version, which starts at 300 bucks, also once off fee. Keep in mind that these are the discounted versions. Right now, there's a special going on for the Vegas Pro version. Right now, it's $400 off, and then there's some extra features that you can buy for 400 bucks, which is $500 off at the moment. Or you can actually go for like a just over $16 a month plan, which, I mean, obviously, it's not a bad idea if you don't want to spend $500 up front. But like if you're going for a long term, I'd obviously recommend buying the software. That way you don't have to spend money over the three or four years you use it. To be completely honest, I think the software is a little overpriced for what you get. 
um, but it all depends on what you're used to as well. A lot of people used to use Sony Vegas Pro 11, which I started out with, and they've discontinued the product right now. So if that's what you're used to, then the Vegas Pro version or the Vegas Studio 15 is definitely an option for you. And uh, you can pay that subscription model as well, which is cheaper than Premiere Pro, which is nice. If you just want an editing software, Premiere Pro being $20 a month just by itself and uh, Vegas being $15, $16 a month. So there's also that option you can weigh out as well if that's what you wanna do. One note that I would add to that though is I can tell half the time when a video is edited by the Vegas softwares because I mean when you apply effects and things like that there's not a whole lot of freedom to customizing them to the way you want them to look so just keep that in mind um, so it's not not too difficult to tell if someone's edited their video on Vegas but then obviously if you pay for the more expensive versions you will have more more features and things like that and then there's Filmora 9 which is actually a really great piece of software you can use the free trial get used to it and get started with it. And then when you want to upgrade, you can go $60 for a lifetime plan, once off fee. You can spend $100 on a lifetime fee, which will allow updates to the effects. So every month they'll add more effects into the software. You can kind of expand your library of effects for your editing. So that's also a really great option. Uh, there is a great tutorial on Filmora 9. Nathaniel Dodson, a buddy of mine at Tudvid, he did a tutorial recently. I'll link that down in the description. You guys can check it out. Kind of get used to it if you want to. Kind of figure out if that's the way you want to go. Filmora will also offer student plans, teacher plans, you know, all kinds of stuff. They've got some options for payment methods as well. So that's really nice. So that's all there is to it. Some video editing software that's designed for beginners and professionals, no matter what skill level you're at. Consider subscribing if you enjoyed, because it really does help the channel out. Leave a like as well, that also would be really cool. But until next time, remember, keep smiling, keep shooting.